Hello, Barmaketi here from Bold and Break. We are going to look at making a dynamic camera in Cinema 4D, and we're going to have a quick look at the new simulation system being built in Cinema 4D by Maxon. I think it is a long, long overdue. Just a quick warning before I do this tutorial. Making a dynamic camera is quite an abstract idea. It would take a lot of calculations in your scene. I can see where it would be useful because it will give organic movement to your camera, but be aware the render times will increase exponentially in your render if you're going to do this technique, but you can also bring down those render times by caching your dynamics. Let's have a look and just start our scene. And we have this new tab here up in the simulation tab, simulation scene. This is really handy to have because it just gives you control over the parameters and allows you to switch where your calculations are taking place. And this is very important. Why? Because let's say you have a GPU focused render. You don't really want your GPU also calculating dynamics while you're calculating the render. Maybe you have a monster set of GPUs and you can get away with that, but this is a nice handy little tool to have. CPU in the background, please calculate it. GPU, do your thing. The other cool thing about this is you now there are loads of parameters around your simulation. Not to get into all these parameters, but one of the important ones is your sub-steps. The higher your sub-steps, usually the more quality and realistic your simulation and dynamics will be. Iterations, I, you know, from my understanding, just allows Cinema 4D to recalculate and recheck that these dynamic and simulations are correct. That's all I'll get into. I am very interested to talk about these in future videos, but for now, let's just get on with our scene. First thing we're going to do is just create a standard camera. This, these techniques should work with Redshift or Octane, whatever render you're using. Let's make sure we're in our camera view. To make our camera dynamic, let's hide our city and get a cube into our scene. Try this cube over here. Drag the cube up to cover our camera into our top view press t scale in your cube now go to your side view and scale the height of your cube maybe just press r and rotate it slightly depending on the position of your camera this doesn't have to be modeling the camera it just has to give a loose shape of the camera okay cool so we have and if we come out of our camera view we can see that the cube is close to the shape of the camera Go back into our camera view if you are feeling like you want something very very accurate get that closer which we'll do now and add some segments just bring these to a la fillet so the fillet is important because you'll get more accurate dynamic calculations because guess what no shape in real life is as sharp as a default cube in Sim 4D. If that was the case, all be covered in cuts. Bring your radius maybe to two. You can up your subdivision how much you like. I think, you know, four is fine. Actually, bring down the radius to one. Okay, cool. Duplicate your cube, select it and hold control. Okay, so now that we have this basic shape set up and we, we're trying to be accurate here, this probably isn't needed, but select your cube. Hold control to duplicate it and then press E. Bring the cube out, scale that right down. Bring it in to fit the shape of the lens. Bring it in a bit further than the lens. You'll see why in a minute. And in your deformer panel here, get the taper object. Make it a child of your second cube. Fit to parent. Z plus, bend out that shape. Make it fill again, so we're not distorting too much of the curvature. Bring up your curvature a little bit. Select both cubes, right click, connect, plus delete. And now you kind of have a camera dummy for your dynamics. Camera underscore dummy. Make your camera a child of this. Right click on your camera dummy, right click and go down to simulation tags. And because there is a new system in Cinema 4D, you will not find your soft or rigid body tag there. Now it is up in bullet tags. And if you have used a specific piece of software, very similar, make this a rigid body tag and go in and let's turn our city back on. 
we want to find the floor of our city, which is the whole city. Okay, now we need something to collide with our camera. If we open our city panel, we can find the object and it's basically the whole city is connected. Now, if we go into our bullet tag and we make this a collider, the whole city, press play. Cinema 4D now shows you what's being calculated in yellow. This is really helpful because how many times have you looked at simulations in Cinema 4D and you're like, what's being calculated? Why is it taking so long? Now you can visually see why this is taking so long and it is so slow. So we don't want to do that. That's a really good visual indicator of what we what we should be focusing on when we calculate something. What we can do is we can get a plane, we press T and we just scale our plane. We've deleted that collider tag now and we just want to create a plane. Maybe let's just... And just bring our plane over here, scale it up. Just for the sake of this video, we're just not going to be too fancy about what we do here. And we're going to create a collider tag with this plane. So this is what the camera will collide with. Now we can turn this off and we should still get our collision working. So there you go. You don't have to be actually calculating with everything in the scene. Find the space that you want your simulation and dynamics to take place in and collide it with that. Okay, cool. So we have something here that is quite interesting. We have a camera falling to the ground, looking kind of natural. There are parameters you probably need to set to get this looking a bit better. If you were doing a POV shot and you wanted someone falling, this could work quite well, maybe with a little bit more parameters involved, maybe some more steps, sub steps and all that good stuff. What's also interesting about this is that if you go to your collision tab in your dynamics tag and you just change the shape, if you go moving mesh, let's see what happens here. Okay, it's kind of sticking to the floor because it's expecting this to be moving after it falls to the ground. What's also interesting is if you just change the shape to box. Go back to that. Um, let's go automatic mode dynamics. And you get that original uh, fall that we did. So kind of playing with this a bit will also help. So you can also go another object so let's keep it on Monk Dynamics for now. Let's make a null. It's camera. Camera. Zero one. Okay, cool. So we have this simulation happening. Cool idea. What if we want the camera to lift organically as if it's being lifted into the air? We can add some gravity and we can also add some turbulence. So at the moment it's at 981 and it's set at acceleration. And it's just pushing it down a little bit faster, which is fine. But what we can do is we can go to force. Let's see what happens when we just go to force. It goes super fast because it's forcing it down into the ground really fast. But we want it to go up. So let's go minus 100. And it's going up really fast, which is cool. But it's going up really straight. And we don't want that. So we want to add some turbulence. So let's put this to 2.5 and bring down our frequency to 10. And again, change this to be a force. And let's see what happens now. And you get this swaying of movement of the camera, which is quite nice. Maybe we want to bring this up to you know more frequency, bring our strength down to one, bring our scale maybe up to three here. And you can see it's slightly swaying a little bit more. Maybe bring our strength to four. And you can see it kind of, it, it's slight delay before it kind of takes off here. Let's change our gravity back to maybe minus 20 instead and it should be mm, that goes down so now you need to find a sweet spot and this is quite cool you're getting this like very slow movement that's organic it's going to go through the topology you know if you wanted to add uh you know do a very complex simulation add a collider tag to the whole thing you might get something interesting there let's go minus 80 we should slightly go up and you get that turbulence effect really working well here so let's bring our factors in here let's bring these into the camera we're going to create another camera camera two copy our camera dummy in here copy our 
plane. We'll turn off our turbulence and we'll turn off our gravity and we will turn off this camera. And we will now go into this camera, go into other view, come up a little bit. We will down on position of the camera, kind of tilt it that way. Uh, we're going to do a falling shot here and see how we can make this look quite organic. Let's see what happens here. And that flips about very in a very cool way. And you can see our plane is actually appearing there, which we don't want. That is very cool. Now our plane is appearing, but we can hide that in the render. So if we want to kind of make this fall more realistic, we need to add maybe some resistance to the to the fall. The best way to do that is friction. Bring in your friction into camera two. Make it a force again. Angular strength. Bring that up to maybe not 20. Maybe bring that up to three. Quite high. Play that. And you can see it's really slowing down the fall of that camera. So that is too slow. Um, maybe bring that down to one. Maybe bring the resistance to one. And you can see that that friction is bring down the angular strength to maybe 0.5. Let's see what happens here. So you can see it, it's kind of really slowing it down for a particular spot. So let's back to our camera one and switch on our gravity. Actually switch on our turbulence, leave our gravity off and see what happens there. And you can see that's kind of what I wanted, essentially, of that like a bit of a shake boots down now that is you know it's a bit naff it's not working right it will take a bit of tweaking and you know if you were to animate a camera you might be able to do it faster but it just shows a different way of looking at a camera cameras usually locked off or it's handheld and taking those things into consideration in your 3d work will really add an element of realism even if it's not necessarily needs to be a real scene it will just feel like you're in the scene because someone's holding the camera at shake which we're going to get into in our third camera and there'll be no dynamic in this so we're going to go up here and we're going to bring this out and we're just going to delete these two bits here we're going to have a look at where we could a couple of places where this example could be quite helpful so you know let's say this is a scene in a movie uh go from the window maybe of one of the buildings angle it off here so it's kind of as if you're looking from the building let's make that look as if you're kind of just looking from window. Let's take off our dynamics tag here. And now we're going to add a null and put our camera dummy under the null. And we're going to call this just camera. For this technique, where we're going to have this kind of handheld feel to it, we're going to take our camera outside of our camera dummy, put our camera into a null, call this null camera, um, and right click on it, go to animation tag and put in vibrate, enable position, put this to 2, 2, 2, just for now. Bring your frequency down to 0.5. The reason it's important to put this camera under this null is because if you have any animation on this camera, which you'd want to do with this vibrate tag, it's going to muck, muck things up a little bit and you don't want to be messing up your keyframes and your positions with this vibrate tag on. So it's, it's a good kind of fail safe to just have this camera into a null and it's good organization anyway. So let's play this and you see the slight movement, maybe not enough, maybe the frequency up to two. And you'll start to see that movement, but it's very, very shaky. So let's bring these up to 10. And that's super shaky. Bring it back down to 0.5. Now, it's just kind of moving the position. We need to move the rotation. And that's way too fast. So bring this 1, 1, 1. And we can put this to 0.2. And uh, maybe 0 0.02. And put this to 0.1. And you can see that handheld effect happening here and it makes such a difference and you can almost lock off your camera do no keyframing and have something happening in this scene and it feels really cinematic you know and your depth of field will still work and all that kind of good stuff will still happen um the very underutilized effect the vibrate tag too often do i see cg shots of locked off cameras they're just static nothing's happening and it feels a little bit unimaginative the scene like it, it doesn't feel like i'm there filmmaking motion is all about making the audience believe what you're putting in front of them i hope this was helpful i hope it was interesting i hope you got something from it this channel is ever growing thank you for everyone who subscribes thank you for everyone who gets involved in the comments keep doing it Keep suggesting, keep going, bold and break, out.